Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you to another lecture of the series Stability in uh, Stability Testing 101. In this uh, topic, we will discuss the development and validation of stability indicating methods. In other lectures, you would already learn the importance of the stability programs of pharmaceutical products as well as the regulatory requirements of such programs. The data from this program would help to establish the quality specifications to determine the storage condition that we place on the product label as well as to justify the expiration dating period of our products. Now, in order to generate such critical data, we um, need a good stability indicating method. For that reason, um, you know, we, I am discussing this topic with you today. Now, the objective of, uh, you know, my, uh, this uh, session in that I will talk about in the next hours or so is uh, stability testing and what it means to be called stability indicating method. Uh, what are the principles of the method validation? Uh, what are the regu regulatory requirements such as ICHQ2R1 uh, and USP 1225 as well as the FDA uh, regulatory guidance that we have on method validation. Um, we will talk about the uh, force degradation studies and also stability indicating methods. Uh, we will talk about the relationships about the USB general chapters 1224, 1225, and 1226, and how do they relate to each other. Um, I usually call them, um, you know, the validation trios, or uh, sometimes, you know, maybe I should call them a triple threat here. But uh, they are do link together, and they are really different from each other. Um, so I will talk about the relationship uh, among them. Um, I also talk a little bit on the change control of analytical procedures, and also the analytical life cycle management uh, throughout the product life cycle. These are also very important because validation uh, is not a one-time thing. It's actually a process. So if we do not understand the analytical procedures and if we do not understand the uh, relationships as well as how this process through, go through and what are the change that we make that could impact the product so it could impact the, um, the, the method um, the analysis of, of the products, then, you know, it's, uh, the data will not be helpful at all. Now, before I start with my, uh, um, you know, with going into validate, development and validation, so let's look at some of the deficiency related to method validation. Validations and investigations continue to be the top uh, two uh, area that the FDA as well as other regu regulatory agencies focus on because they still continue to be to have the most um, uh, citations on. So, you know, these observations are actually recorded from various FDA 483 citations, uh, GMP trends, uh, drug GMP reports or so. Uh, if you look at the first bullet, a specificity is not determined during method validation, nor it is required uh, in the procedure. Now, as you know, specificity, if it's not determined, then we would not know how we actually, how accurate uh, we actually measure the components of interest. So for that reason, the method is not really valid if we don't do specificity. Um, the second bullet show you that uh, unidentified HPLC peaks found during stability testing of the BioBatch validation lots were not identified nor evaluated. Um, impurities, uh, unidentified peaks, has always been the biggest issues 
you know, what are the level we have to monitor? What are the level that we have to um, qualify or, you know, um, look into or identify those materials? So th those are very critical. It is, uh, impurity is a, uh, a quality, uh, a quality critical attribute of the product. So we, there's a lot of um, attention has been going in this area. Um, the uh, last bullet there is that the top of various modifications, including extended extraction times, and the use of incorrect filters have been used for product stability testing. And these modifications have not been validated uh, nor approved by the FDA. So this can show that, you know, there are people do doing modifications to the method and how much they can modify and what they can modify to continue to keep uh, the method in the, in the valid state. So those are very important. Do we understand what we can do, what we can modify, and what we cannot? Because if the modifications are not being studied before, then it is not really considered um, uh, approved by the agency or as part of the uh, validations uh, that we have for the method. Now looking through some other um, deficiencies, 